Some days, <laughs> I swear, if it wasn't for, I believe, the challenges to our faith, we probably wouldn't really hold on to what we believe in. We would be easily persuaded to follow the crowd or get caught up in some wild tangent to the left or the right. But boy, I tell you, sometimes though, when you know something's right and God is with you, the Holy Spirit's with you, and uh, you know it's true, and you, you know, you could remain silent about it, you know, and just kind of not say it. Like, especially, especially when people on the internet of all places, or even in public, or even in person, will attack someone, will, will accuse somebody that you know in your heart of hearts and you've met in person and you've talked to and you know that person is a Christian and you know that they're dynamic and they're right on and they come up with all this stuff and accuse them of all manner of blasphemous actions and attitudes and say all kinds of evil things against them falsely for Jesus' sake and you, you take a stand and you say no, I will not participate with slander and backbiting and gossip and evil tidings and doing wrong, well, <laughs> good luck, because <laughs> you're going to get crucified. <laughs> Man, I tell you, there is nothing so hurtful as a self-righteous Christian on a crusade to tell you why they're right and you're wrong. It isn't worth it. You just need to make your case, state your point, and walk away. Often, when I get into those discussions, I try to bring the person to, and I make the statement, look, you can interpret the Bible all you want to. You can do all these other things that you want to do and pick and choose what you want to believe in, in the Bible. But if you really got a problem, please stop what you're doing. Go ask God. Go talk to Jesus. Find out for yourself. He will reveal the truth. You see, that's the point that I'm trying to make that really just irritates me. Don't study it. Ask God. Now, God will show you in his word. Don't get me wrong. He's going to use the word of God to prove to you what is true. He will reveal it. But don't be satisfied with somebody who's convinced you of something and then taking a bunch of scriptures and strung them out there to make a case and then try to sell you on the idea that the person is guilty. That's like all these people who play armchair juries when they're watching some trial on TV and they think that they know it all because, you know, they've only been given a part of the evidence that only that can be presented according to certain rules and regulations. So it can be manipulated to make it look a certain way so you think the person's guilty. You could do it. You, come on, folks. You could honestly be sending someone to hell when you don't know all the cases or the circumstances. Only God can see inside the heart. Only God knows all of it. So, my point is this. If God knows it all, what are we doing? Why are we judging, acting like jury, acting like we are the Holy Spirit, when God didn't put us in charge and say, look, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit, so instead of letting Him reveal it, I want you to go out and do it because you've got the Holy Spirit now, you've got discernment, you can go out and you can judge that person, you can tell them to go to hell, and they're going to go to hell. Excuse me? Hello? Come on. Come back. Say it. No, really. I think the tragedy of a Christian who learns too much is they go too far with who they think they are. Let me say that again. I think the tragedy with a Christian is that they go too far when they learn too much and they think they are more than they are. Notice how both times they said it differently and they came back to the same conclusion. You're not who you think you are. You are nothing without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who can reveal it. But he's not going to stop you from being prejudiced. He's not going to stop you from being biased. If you really get into that kind of narrow-mindedness, you're going to find out that God can't deal with your pride and arrogance, but he's going to let you go your way until you fall flat on your face in your own sin that you're committing that you're accusing the other people of. You're going to do what you accuse others of doing. God forbid. Don't do it in the first place.
don't accuse him in the first place, you won't fall in that sin in the second place. So I don't. I ask God, I say, look, Lord, you know, I don't know. Is this guy a believer? You know? Let me take a year to prove to me that this man of God is a man of God. That he's right on. That he's, he's teaching the word of God correctly. Let me go talk to him. Let me go write to him. Let me go speak with him personally. Let me find out the truth. Let me see his writings. Let me see the accusations. Let me put them all down on paper. Let me compare what's being said with what is actually there. And when I lined out and I have done it, you know what? I am, pardon the expression, sick and tired of all these accusations against Rick Warren. As far as I'm concerned, people can bite me <laughs> on the finger. Whatever that means. I don't know. Maybe, 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 I don't know. If that's something nasty, sorry. But the point is, I went out of my way. I know Rick. You know, I visited. You know, I've seen. I've been a part. You know, I don't care. You're wrong. You know, talk to God about it. You got a problem with the purpose. My wife and I just still <laughs> are dumbfounded by this. People come to me and say, well, you know, you can't trust that book, The Purpose Driven Life. Why? <laughs> It brings you to Jesus Christ and lets you have a personal relationship and tells you how you need to discover Jesus for yourself and let Jesus lead you and guide you. Gee, that sounds so wrong. Maybe there's a better way. Hello? Oh, well, you know, he made so much money off that. Wait a minute. Who made money off that? Where did the proceeds go for? How much of it was given to the church? Come on now. I was around at the time. Let's be real. When you talk to some child who doesn't know any better, you can go and make false accusations all you want to and make a big name for yourself by accusing big names of things they aren't guilty of. But when you know and you've been there and you saw it with your own eyes, you heard it with your own ears, you've handled it with your own hands, then you come back and you talk to me. Otherwise, shut up. I don't have any time for people who are trying to stop the gospel from being preached. I'm more convinced of praying for those who are sharing the gospel. Because you see, every time you find somebody who wants to accuse someone of doing something wrong, let me ask you this. Show me on their website when they share the gospel. Show me how many times they actually present Jesus to the masses. Show me how often they are going out of their way to tell someone about the good news of Jesus Christ and the fact that someone died for their sins? Or are they only about accusing, tearing down, making you think in a certain way, but never sharing Jesus? Let me ask you this. When you see all these accusatory type people, how often do they talk about a personal relationship with God? Aren't they always talking about religion? Do this, do this, do this. They didn't do this right. You know, he didn't do it this way. He didn't do it that way. She didn't do it this way. She didn't do it that way. She's a she, so she can't do what he can do, but he can do what he can do because he's a he. God used a jackass. I'm sure he could use a woman. <laughs> Excuse me, women. He can use a man, too. I mean, get real. Man, this whole idea of these false doctrines and false things, there's so much false accusations. You know, it's like... The, the spirit of Antichrist doesn't have to worry. It's got plenty of people out there doing anti-Jesus stuff against people that aren't wrong. That Satan doesn't need to worry about coming out of hiding. He's perfectly content to sit back and watch Christians in action. Man, need to get over it. If people are sharing the gospel, Jesus said, Don't forbid them. He who is not against me is for me. Now, I'll admit, I have a problem with that statement, and that's being straight with you guys, you know, I'm telling you right from me to you. I don't like reading that one. I really don't, because there are some people out there in the ministry that I'm pretty sure are false prophets. Now, Rick Warren isn't one of them. I'm <laughs> sorry. There are some obvious ones that you could go after, and it's like, shoot, they're easy targets, you know, why not go for them? You know, why pick on somebody who's actually sharing the gospel? who's actually doing something effective, who's actually supporting ministries outside of his own to go do their thing and bless them with what they're doing. I mean, come on. You know, these other ministries are taking in a lot of money for themselves and they ain't doing nothing for anybody else.
Excuse me, I'd go after them, and I'd leave the one alone. Sheesh. But you know, once they start like with somebody like Rick Warren, it's always interesting, because then I see them attacking Billy Graham, and I'm like, boy, you started off stupid and you went to idiot. <laughs> what idiot would accuse Billy Graham of being wrong, occult, or off the wall? I know I'd better be careful because actually there's probably an idiot listening to this right now. Okay, you started off not as an idiot, but you were stupid when you start, started by accusing Rick Warren. Then you decided to progress down the declination of accusing someone else, so you started accusing everybody. It does bug me. But that's because I'm passionate about what I have seen, what I have heard, and what I know. I know that I know that I know because I was there. I have seen it. I have handled it. I know it with my own hands. Don't tell me that I don't know my theology. <laughs> I'll come at you and beat you to death with it. <laughs> come on now. I know hermeneutic and homiletic. I know the theological premises upon everything that's based upon there, and you don't even know the Jewish side of me that could come right out and start doing the drash and start the rabbinical teaching about the Talmudic, the Reologic, and reason. They go beyond the scenes. Think you're so smart, Gentile? <laughs> Oi, who cares? If they're sharing Jesus, leave it alone. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Don't keep attacking things you don't know about, and when you think you know about it, shut up unless Jesus tells you to. When it's Jesus telling you to, then tell me he spoke to you and said so. Because, you know, that's the other thing. I always ask them, whenever they're accusing somebody, I always ask them, did God give you this ministry? Did, did, did God come to you personally and talk to you and say, George, <laughs> guy's not, name's not George, but George, I want you to go out and accuse this person. I want you to go out and attack this person. I want you to go tell the people that this person is not my servant, even though he is saying everything about me about Jesus, and he's talking about me, and he's promoting the Bible, and he's telling everyone to study on their own, to seek out the Lord by way of you know being filled with the Holy Spirit and letting that Spirit of God work within their life in order to follow me and not himself, and he's allowing me to lead them in their life the way that I want them to go, and he's not telling them to go only to his church, but he's telling them to go to any church that they want to, as long as the Holy Spirit's teaching them by way of the Word of God. And what was your reasoning again for getting involved in attacking them? I don't think God is telling you to do it. Hello? Jeez. But, here's what happens, is people go, oh man, you know, I heard my pastor say that Rick did this, Rick did that, and Joe did this, and hit Fred did that, and they were all here, there, and everywhere. So guess what? They got to be wrong. So I'm going to go out and tell everyone else what I just heard and I did, and I'm going to say it because I got the authority, you know, because I heard it from my... I heard it from my... I didn't hear it from Jesus. I didn't hear God tell me to do it. As a matter of fact, there's only one accuser of the brethren, and it's not a question of discernment here. Discernment is simple, because I can mine it all out, anything that anybody's ever accused them of, and put it on paper and lay it out there. Every time they do, funny how they start changing it, like, well, he was here and he should have said. Wait a minute, so what did he say? Well, he said this, but he meant this. Oh, so your accusation is based on what he meant, not what he said, right? Okay. Oh, but there was so-and-so, you know, he, he was around a bunch of sinners. Oh, okay, so are we talking about Jesus or, or Rick? Because I'm sure Jesus got busted for being among publicans and sinners and tax collectors, right? <laughs> Needless to say, what I do, and maybe this is a good word for you, when you run into all those theological people that want to separate themselves and you from the body of Christ that's out there sharing Jesus the best that they know how, separate yourself from them. Don't, don't like, you know, tell them they're wrong or, you know, beat on them or whatever. Just let them go do their thing. If they want to jump up and down and scream and shout and accuse the entire world of being false, let them. Let them go do their Romp and stomp, chomp, dance. Who cares? I'm too busy sharing Jesus. 
and you be about sharing Jesus too. Don't be involved with them. Just walk away. You know, somebody starts bad mouthing somebody, walk away. You don't need it in your head. You don't need it in your heart. You don't need it in your soul because the peace, love, and joy that Jesus has wanting for you will control your life and it will allow the Holy Spirit to pull you back from people that are walking in the flesh and in the intelligence of their own mind without the wisdom that God would give them because really if God gave to them the wisdom that he wants for them besides just the knowledge of the Word of God in order to make some intelligent sounding statements then they wouldn't be so blind and they would see the fruit that is being accomplished that God has worked out not only in the man of God but likewise in the ministry that he has accomplished God has accomplished in him and through him and around him so until you've been there don't accuse recuse yourself by stepping back and away and say well I don't know now, you see, a judge, whenever he's been involved in anything, will recuse himself. He'll step away from it and say, I can't judge impartially, or maybe I can, but I don't want to even appear like I'm partial because I'm too personally involved in it, so I'll step away. So if you find yourself caught in some of these little tricks and traps that some of these religion people, and even though they may be good in one area, are trying to throw at you and make you kind of like, you know, join the bandwagon and raise the rah-rah, re re you know, Ooh, let's go crucify somebody routine step away from it for five minutes and think about it think about where they're going with what they're saying and what they're doing are they stopping something that God is doing from happening can you see God in it can you see how God might be using it to reach out to people to save them through the person if you can you can still go to God and ask him what is your will Try Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 always in circumstances where you don't have discernment, you don't know. Or even if you think you do know. Because the Holy Spirit may tell you not to be involved in something for other reasons than you think it's all wrong. Might just be he wants you to go over here to study something or to watch somebody make a fool of himself. <laughs> but the point is, is that when the Holy Spirit's leading you, when God is leading you, you can trust in a scripture called Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 where it says, Trust in the Lord. Not trust in your teaching pastor, elder, deacon, whoever, trust in the Lord who's in control. He's in control of your life because you gave him control of your life, right? He's Lord, you're not. Got it, get it, good. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all of the passion, all the feelings, all the ideas, all the emotions, all the yeses and all the no's and all the maybes and all I don't know's. Lean not in your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to read about something and find some scripture that fits for what you want to do and then you run right out and act like a crusader because you got one scripture to stand on but you don't have the entire word of God. You don't have the counsel from the Holy Spirit to tell you that how the word of God was going to apply in that circumstance of life that you find yourself in today because he's the only one that could apply it to you by way of spiritual discernment for him to play the Holy Spirit in your life so that he could be God and lead you in the way that you should go on this day that he has made for you to enjoy and to be a part of it in order to move into the same spirit that he's in as he has designed the day and he has made for you to find your way so that you'd be in the right appointment at the right time doing the right thing according to what he says to do. What's up, Doc? Or... In other words, Lean not in thine own understanding, but in all your ways, in everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, acknowledge Him. Lord, take it. And He, not you, not me, not the pastor, not the elder, will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Guarantee you can't go wrong. You may try, but you can't say the Lord led you. <laughs> The law and the gospel, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. James 2.10 We could go forever on that. <laughs> the moral law does not consider us as weak human beings at all. It takes no account of our heredity and infirmities. It demands that we be absolutely moral. The moral law never alters either for the noblest or for the weakest. It is eternally and abiding the same. No ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> the moral law ordained by God does not make itself weak to the weak. It does not palliate our shortcomings, 
it remains absolute for all time and eternity. If we do not realize this, it is because we are less than alive. Immediately we are less than alive. Immediately we are alive, life becomes a tragedy. I was alive without the loved ones, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. When we realize this, then the Spirit of God convicts us of sin. You, me, everyone. Until a man gets there and sees that there is no hope, absolutely no hope, the cross of Jesus is a farce to him. Conviction of sin always brings a fearful, binding sense of the law. It makes a man hopeless, sold under sin. There is only one way in which I can get right with God, and that is by the death of Jesus Christ. Your salvation has a price, and it is the life of Jesus Christ. I must get rid of the lurking idea that I can ever be right with God because of my obedience. Much of us could, which of us could ever obey God to absolute perfection? None of us, ever, in any single moment of any time of any day. We only realize the power of the moral law when it comes with an if. God never coerces us. He never makes us. In one mood, we wish he would make us do something or do the thing that we should, and in another mood, we wish he would leave us alone. Whenever God's will is in the ascendant, all compulsion is gone. When we choose deliberately to obey him, then he will tax the remotest star and last grain of sand to assist us with all his mighty power. So the reality is that if you choose to obey, if you choose to ask him today, then he will show you the way that you should walk therein. He will teach you what you should know for the day that you need it and at the moment that you require it. For he will meet you in the place you are where you are. God does not leave you alone to say, oh, well, you know, I need to pick out all these different pastors and elders and deacons to figure out who's right, who's wrong, and what there's going on. You don't know. God may be bringing them through a learning process, that guy who's out there accusing everybody. He may be bitter because of his wife died or his dog died or he just doesn't have the right vitamins <laughs> for whatever reason. Or he may be used of God to bring false accusation, letting God letting him make those wrong accusations so that someday he falls on his face and comes back to the realization that he did it without the Lord. So don't forbid people from doing what they're doing, but you be choosing what it is that God would do with you and you won't be led astray because you won't be caught up in the way that someone else is going, but you'll be led in the way that God is choosing for you to go. Choose you this day whom you will serve, and you'll find that he'll lead you in the way you should go. All you need to do is ask him. All you need to do is seek him. All you need to do is open up your understanding and ears to listen to what he says to you to do today.